Hello and welcome to the first uh, course content online tutorial uh, YouTube video for Econ 2x03 slash 2g03. Uh, this one's going to deal with creating production functions from word functions, word functions, word problems. Um, and the first problem that I'm going to have you attempt on your own is the following. Marsha owns a chili restaurant serving Marsha's mush, her specialty chili. Uh, each bash of Marsha's mush requires exactly three pounds of ground mystery meat and one eighth pound of stewed tomatoes. By the way, try saying each batch of Marsha's mush three times fast. I, I just tried to do that for the first time and it wasn't easy. Um, so I'd like to know what Marsha's production function is. Okay, so pause it, attempt it. I'm going to go to the second question, then I'm going to pause that so you can attempt that, and then I'll come back and do both answers. Okay, so across the street from Marsha is Ralph's Random Roadhouse. At Ralph's, you eat what your waiter brings. It's a surprise, hence the name. Ralph serves gator stew, veggie pizza, and lobster thermidor. To make a veggie pizza, Ralph needs one half pound of veggies. An order of gator stew requires one pound of gator tail. Finally, Ralph needs two lobster tails to make one thermidor. If Ralph can serve any combination of his three dishes, what is his production function? Okay, so I'll pause this, you can attempt it, and I will go back to the first problem and do the solution for you. Okay, so the solution to this one is that C, which I'm saying is number of chilies or pounds of chili or whatever, it's going to be the minimum. And I know that Professor Bruce likes to use Z for an input, so I will maintain that. notational thing. Okay, so C is the minimum of 8ZT or 1 3rd ZM. Okay, so if you got that, good for you. I'm going to give us the answer for number 2, and that is that P, which I'm calling number of plates, you can call it anything you want. And sorry, I copied this down incorrectly. The two should be ZV, and the one half should be on the ZL. So, if you're having trouble reading your, reading my handwriting, don't worry. So am I. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back. Uh, if you got that answer, uh, good for you. Uh, please save these production functions for the tutorial on. Um, conditional input demands because I think I'm going to be pretty short on time for what YouTube will let me upload. Uh, so I'm going to try to speed that up as much as possible. Um, but anyways, save them. If not, you can come back and get them. I'll direct you to that. So how to do number one. Okay, well, what's the first thing I need to know is I need to know what I'm doing. Okay, so I get that out of the question. So step one is to ignore the irrelevant. Um, so I don't really care about Marsha's restaurant, as wonderful as it must be to eat there with the mystery meat chili. I really just care about this uh, section of the problem outlining exactly what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. Now speaking of exactly, that's a good keyword. Okay, and I tried to draw a straight line, but again, you know how that works for me. Um, I tried to draw a straight line underneath this word exactly because that's a keyword that should point you to a minimum function. So I'm going to write this out here, minimum function I'm going to write FCN for function, right? So you're looking for the words like exactly or words like fixed, ratio, or anything that describe that says that you basically can't have one with the other or there's no substituting between the two things. Okay, so those are common ones to use in a word problem that you might see on, say, a uh, midterm or a test or a final exam. Okay, so how do we get from, now that we know what kind of function we're doing, how do we get these coefficients? Okay, well, to start off with, let's mathematize this, the words here, okay? So I know that one chili, right, requires three units of mystery meat. Okay, so that's the first step. All right, the second step 
is that I know that one chili needs one eighth of a unit of tomatoes. Okay. So you say, well, those look similar to this answer that you have, but it's not quite right. And I would agree with you. Um, because the number that we want is actually the inverse of this, but here's how I want to explain it because you can use it for any method, okay? I want to transform these two coefficients that I've just circled into ones. Okay, so I want the coefficient on this on Zm in this equation to be one, and I want the coefficient on Zt in this equation to be one, okay? So, well, to do that, I want Zm. All right, I'm just going to divide both sides by three. Zc. Jeez. Okay, and similarly, Zt then is going to be 8c. Now these, once I transform these, these coefficients are the ones that go in front of the z's and the z in here. Okay, so that might be a little bit confusing, but that's just something you're going to have to learn, right? So I take the one third, and that becomes the coefficient on zm in the function, even though it's the coefficient on z from the ratio that we got from the question. Okay? So that leaves me with then c equals min eight z t or one third z m. Okay, so that is the perfect complements version, right? Remember, we're looking for the words exactly or the words fixed ratio. So moving on to problem two, which we see the answer for here, okay? This is a case of, right, okay, so do the same thing. We'll get rid of across the street from Marsha's because I don't really care where they are geographically to one another or why it's named what it is. Um, I might care what he serves, uh, so I'll leave the rest of the question. Um, it's pertinent, at least in some degree, okay? So if I'm going to be Ralph, I'm going to serve plates, okay? And I'm looking for what kind of production function is Ralph going to have? Well, my keyword here is any combination, okay? So I'm looking for things like any combination, or regardless, so like regardless of how many lobsters he has or how many gators he has or, or um, anything like that, right, regardless, or just any word that basically is telling me that I don't need any specific ingredient to make it, I just need some number of any ingredient to make it. And this is the case of substitutes, Wow, I can't spell today. Substitutes with three T's and perfect substitutes. Okay, so that's our word list. Wow, that was a bad line. Redo that. Okay, so any combination or regardless or just, you know, something that describes what I just talked about. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did for the perfect complements just a bit ago, right? So I'm saying plate, one plate equals, right, and okay, so let's do the first one, right? So how many veggies, right? Well, I need one half of a pound of veggies, okay? So again, plate is one gator, or a plate is, um, sorry, two lobster tails, okay? So again, I want to transform these coefficients to unity, okay? So then Zv is going to be 2 times p, Zg is going to just be 1 times p, and Zl is going to equal 1 half p, okay? And just like last time, 
these are the coefficients right that I want to plug into my um, production function okay so again just like last time it was the coefficient on the C that I was plugging into the production function this time it's the coefficient on the P because I'm using P instead of C that's the only reason right I could call this C uh, I could replace P with C and it would be exactly the same the only difference right is that because they're perfect substitutes I want to use addition instead of the minimum function right so that gives me P equals right from here one half ZL plus um, one ZG plus two ZV. And that's all there is to it. So again, if you would hang on to these uh, production functions for the uh, conditional input demand tutorial, I would be much obliged. As I said, I'm going to have to try to do that as speedily as possible uh, without losing the uh, um, content. So thank you very much.